The Coach Kevin McMillan Show is brought to you by BSN Sports. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Coach Kevin McMillan Show. I'm Chris Brinkley. Skyhawks coming off a couple of conference wins over Belmont and Southeast Missouri at the Elam Center. Coach, we've made a lot of it, but it's glad to, I'm glad to be back at the Elam Center, and I know your team probably was also. We have talked a lot about it, but when you have 11 straight games, uh, or 10 on the road, it, uh, you're, you're very, very, very pleased to be back in the Elam Center in, in front of your fans, and uh, a great chance for, uh, for our kids to get back with their families here, and uh, our fans to get a chance to see them play uh, instead of watching them on TV. Yeah. You assume at home you'll shoot better? That first game back against Belmont, Coach, you almost shot 60% in the game. We shot better in both games, and uh, I would love to attribute that to that's what we're going to be for the rest of the year. <laughs> uh, don't know, but uh, I, I did think that, that we took better shots in the last two games than we have been taking. So I think it's it's a function of a couple of different things. One is that we're back at home, and two is that we are taking better shots. And three, we're starting to get a few easier shots. So uh, I think you combine those things, and you're going to see higher percentages, which, which we need. Coach, you shot that uh, 57% from the field and 53% from three-point range. You said after the 53 that you felt you played 36 minutes of pretty good basketball. I thought, you know, we've been talking for a long time about our effort level and where we think it needs to be, and... There was a played really hard. We kind of relaxed a little bit, but overall, I thought it was about 36 minutes, really, really, really good. And uh, and that's the effort level that we're striving for. And not not necessarily, um, you know, play well every possession. Not necessarily make every single shot you shoot, uh, but you can play with a certain level of intensity and passion and you know sacrifice for each other and all of that, and I think for about 36 minutes we really did. Um, effort level, and I like to go on a deeper level with you, that can be from the individual or as the team. Uh, yeah, that gets, here we go, yeah. that gets no. complex because it could be it could be your backcourt, mm -hmm. your two guards, uh, it could be your three players that are playing with somebody like Butler and Newsom, figuring out how to compete with those guys and, and raise their level to theirs. Uh, it could be your whole team, it could be your bench, it could be the different combinations that sub in. I mean, every one of them has their own personality. Every group, every group of groups, mm -hmm. and uh, you have to figure out how to keep those all going in the same direction. I would like to know how many combinations of players you've had on the floor this season. Oh, it's, you know, it's unbelievable. Right. Uh, you know, because as soon as you take one and move one, there's a combination. Take two. Oh, so even if back. you change positions a little bit. Oh, yeah. 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 I mean, we've, we've had Katie Schubert. Katie Schubert has played... The one, the two, the three, the four, and the five this year. She's played all five positions on the floor, so your combinations become endless because one player like that you move around, it creates all kinds of chaos for different positions. Mm -hmm. uh, not chaos because it helps us, but uh, as far as combinations goes, it could be anything. Coach, in the game against Belmont, you get Shea Warfield cross back. We'll talk, talk about her first and the concussion issue. But, you know, she, she's a freshman. Uh, she certainly helps you on your press. She's very athletic, was a great high school player. She's a big part of this team this year. Yeah, and I, I got on to her after this game because I told her she had a headlight look mm -hmm. when she went out there. Uh, and she said she was really, really nervous. Uh, freshmen are going to be like the stock market. I mean, they're just going to be up and down and <clears throat> you can't really predict <clears throat> sometimes what they're going to do and she had gotten to a point where she was playing really good right and the concussion hits and it backs her up and now she's nervous again well now we have to start over and so she struggled a little bit in this game but it was great to see her back out there uh, she's going to have to fight through it and get better and uh, but she's so she can rebound she can defend she's getting better at putting the ball in the hole she can handle the ball so she's a piece to this puzzle I don't think she realized how important she could uh, before the season's over. Right. I really don't think she knows. Coach, and the nervousness, that's interesting that she got nervous after she played so much prior to missing the two games. Do you think players have a tendency to be more nervous at home maybe than on the road? Probably, uh, mm -hmm. because you know everybody's there watching you, mm -hmm. uh, seeing you, your, your surroundings, everything's familiar. When Especially you're at a mid-major school. Yeah, yeah. yes. Because yeah. you look in the stands, you probably know 40 to 50% of the people up there by first probably. name. Yeah. Probably. Even though we have good crowds, you know everybody. Right, right. And, uh, but, I, but I think on the road, you, you, know, you kind of have a different perspective. Uh, so, I mean, I, I'm not, wasn't upset with her about being nervous. That's fine. You know, that just 
learn to deal with it, and let's let's move on. I told her I didn't want to see the deer in the headlight look the next time. It's awesome that she was honest enough to tell you that. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, the other player that came back was Cortrice Golden, Big Baby, we call her, and uh, it's she's been plagued by injuries the last two seasons. She's had knee injuries, which uh, have have forced her to be uh, have different training regimens. Uh, she's had a couple of surgeries to try to clean it up and get get healthy. Um, she got cleared back that Monday, mm -hmm. and so we started kind of working her in to see what she could do, and we finally just decided Friday that we were going to go ahead and play her. I mean, it was a decision. As soon as you put her in the game, she loses that season, uh, and so we, you know, we were thinking maybe red shirt her, don't know, and we finally just said, look, we we've, we've got to give this a chance and let her get out here and play and see what mm -hmm. she can do, and. Uh, you know, very, very talented basketball player. Uh, she's just got to, she's got to get her, take care of her knees and her body, and she's got to get her weight where she can run up and down that floor and play for us. You know, we don't care, we don't care what kids weigh mm -hmm. that make that make us any different. You just got to be able to get up and down the floor and compete. So, and your pace is a little different than some teams. Yeah, I mean, she's, and we're starting to press some now. Mm -hmm. So that. You know you're gonna to have to get your body in shape, and, and but it was great to see her back out there. Uh, you know she she had eight point six minutes and did what she can do. I mean, she yeah. can score and uh, and she can rebound, and that's what she did for us. What's amazing to me about her is that she she's a post player, but man, she has touch around the basket. She shot one shot, and the ball looked like a marshmallow bouncing up around them. It's yeah. so unbelievably soft touch, soft mm -hmm. hands, and she's got really really quick feet, and you would never expect that. Her footwork is unbelievable. Uh, and you wouldn't expect that when you when you look at her, but she's very light on her feet, uh, and it's one of those things. If she does get in shape, she's an absolute load to try to handle mm -hmm. because she she can do so many things. She can step out and shoot it. She can post you up. She can take you off the dribble. She's strong enough to play with people a lot bigger than her. I mean, just such a versatile kid, and we really really need her to come on. And her what she brings to the table is like no other player on your team. It's different. Oh yeah, I, I don't. Is there anybody in the conference? Well, I kind of wonder that you also. Know, yeah. I don't think there's anybody in the conference like yeah. her. So, you know, any time, well, if you look at our team, that's about all we are. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're little guards. Nobody's got little bitty ones like we do. Now we've got, you know, Cortrice can do what she does. We're playing Asia at the five, at five, eleven, six foot. Maybe, you know, Katie Schubert's played five different positions. I mean, who, who does the stuff that, that we're asking our kids to do? But. Uh, they, we're figuring out kind of how to plug all those people in. Southeast Missouri was the next opponent after the win over Belmont. You said you did not want to see the team relax after a win that you got over Belmont. And you led 50-28 in the first half. And the big story in this game is what you did, I guess, for the first 30 minutes. First 30 minutes, Chris. I, you know, I told the girls after the game that that was as, you know, as good an answer to one of my questions as I've ever seen one of our teams have. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I was I was very nervous about that game in that we had come off a really good half at Austin P. Then we play a good game against Belmont. Now, are we trying to turn a corner, or was that just we happened to play two good games? And I thought the first 30 minutes of that, their statement was, we're going to turn a corner. Then the part that keeps coaches up at night, we have to play the last 10, and we our, our, uh, our second group kind of let up a little bit. But... But for, for 30 minutes, I thought the intensity and effort was there. We defended mm -hmm. unbelievably well. Uh, we were aggressive. Uh, we weren't fouling people. And it, it was just a, it was a great, great 30 minutes to watch. You win the game, final score 171. Uh, I want to talk to you about the last 10 minutes. You, you pulled the starters out, and Jasmine and Heather weren't in there, the seniors. Uh, and on our post-game show, when you explained why that 10 minutes was so important to you and your team, it made a whole lot of sense. Could you repeat what you said in the post game show well, after the game? After coaching for it seems like forever, you you see, and I, this may not be what you're asking. Uh, things carry into each other, and so if you if you've got your momentum going, and everything's going good, and then whatever happens to stop that momentum, you've got to get it started back up. That's hard to do, and. So the last 10 minutes of that game, you know, the way I'm looking at it is, look, if we don't do what we're supposed to here, then the next game we may have to start over. Uh, and so that's what we're striving to do is to keep ourselves going up so that we don't ever have to try to start back up. Mm -hmm. And so it doesn't matter who's on the floor. It doesn't matter what the score is. It doesn't matter what the outcome of the game is. It's how are you playing, and you have to finish a certain way so that you can keep that going. Right. And that's what... I was pushing our kids about the, the last 10 minutes as we quit defending, we started fouling. Now, we did take care of the ball, which mm -hmm. I was pleased with, but we, 
we didn't defend and, and that intensity level wasn't there. And you don't want to lose it because you don't know if you can get it back. One of the things you said, too, that was insightful that goes along with that is that your club had built a 44-point lead. And, and, the, and the younger players kind of let it slip away a little bit. And those who had earned that 44-point lead were a bit frustrated on the sideline. Well, that's, that's the, other, the other part. The other side to that is, is that if we're doing this thing as a team, if I'm coming in, if we go play disc golf together, you're, I'm a disc, you're golf. a disc golfer. If we go play and we're on a team and you know we have some type of play where you alternate shots or like scrambles or whatever they are, and you hit a great shot and I follow it up and throw one into the woods, which I don't know about disc golf, then you've got to cover up for me and you throw another great shot. Right. Well, then I do something and throw it into the lake and then, well... I need to be holding my own and pulling my weight, and if I can't if I can't make the shot that's as good as yours, then I can at least hold my own mm -hmm. so that you can keep making those big shots. Kind of like a relay race in track and field. Very, when, very similar. When the baton is handed yeah, off. Very similar. And so what what happened in in my perspective was is that we had a group that was hitting all the good shots uh, from the disc golf analogy, and then the other ones came in and were just kind of like, well, you know, it doesn't. Doesn't matter because I know it's it's the game is safe mm -hmm. at this point, or they'll bail me out if I don't do well, and that you don't want that. You want everyone to do now. If if we get out there and get whipped and they're giving their best, mm -hmm. that's fine. Mm -hmm. But I didn't I didn't think that's what we were doing. Skyhawks got the win. Final score over Southeast Missouri, 171. We'll come back and talk about the week ahead. And three Skyhawks were honored this past week. That's coming up on the Coach Kevin McMillan Show. At this time, we would like to thank our basketball corporate donors. Carry Insurance. Dynamix. Parker Hannafin. State Farm. Surgical Associates of Martin. Vans Institutional Pharmacy Walmart Back with Coach Kevin McMillan. Coach, before we look at the week ahead, uh, Heather Butler and Asia Jones honored the Ohio Valley Conference. Heather's the games against the Belmont and Southeast Missouri. Asia, co-freshman of the week. Well, I thought that's great for Asia. You know, Butler has has had so many awards. I don't know how she'll have to build a house, <laughs> uh, not a room, a house for hers. Uh, that's great for Asia to get recognized. I think she's playing really well. Uh, she has is progressed unbelievably in the last two or three weeks. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's really when we've gotten into conference play, she's kind of clicked on and and started uh, playing like we know she can. Which which I think, she, when in your non-conference game, she was going against much bigger post players and, and more athletic and maybe quicker post players. So when she got to conference play, she is doing what you hope to see your post players do when they have to play against someone their own size, and that's take advantage of them. Well, it's kind of what you hope your team does. Right. Uh, coming from But not that everybody does that, though. You're exactly right. But she had a good non-conference uh portion of the schedule it's just you're right she was playing against four or five inches taller as quick mm -hmm. seniors and she's learning and uh, now that we've gotten a conference play she's kind of putting that to to, to use and, and she's had a really good first five games of the conference schedule you know we're going to need her to continue to do that uh, along with some other post players but I'm very pleased that, uh, that she was able to get recognized. Coach Russell works with your post players? Coach Russell does work with post yeah. Yeah and what's what's he saying about Asia's play? Well, he's liked them since day one. He, yeah. he thought uh, the the group of post players that we had, which had included Jordan at the time before she was hurt, mm -hmm. Cortrice Golden, uh, Chelsea Roberts, Asia Jones, and, uh, and Tierra Caldwell, she thought that that group could be the best group that we'd had and uh, thought that their work ethic was really good and thought that they were trying to learn. And so he thought if they keep pushing, they could be really good. And I think Asia's the first one that we're starting to see kind of reap some of the benefits of what he saw. Hopefully her success will put pressure on the other post players to step that's, it up. That's yeah. what you hope. You hope each one of them is raising the bar on each other. Yeah. Coach, also Jasmine Newsom, we learned, uh, named to the Nancy Lieberman watch list, which uh, names her as one of the top point guards in the country. Well, if, if Butler needs a house, so does Newsom. <laughs> so, uh, you know, Jasmine is tremendously deserving. Uh, she, she lately, talking about two different things here, one is that, yes, 
she is one of the best point guards in the country. But uh, here lately, she started uh, turning it up a little bit defensively out of the press, which mm -hmm. is has been neat to watch. She chased down a couple of people from behind in the last game. Uh, I, I think that she and Megan White and and Heather Butler are starting to become the leaders that we need them to be for this team to be whatever the best that it is. Uh, you know, we, we've talked seniors are starting to make that push and I think that you're seeing a lot of that coming from Jasmine. I even saw Jasmine in one of the games and I won't call it any names but she pulled one of the freshmen over and had a 20 second conversation with her during the game uh, telling her you weren't in the right place you've got to be here when we do this. Which is exactly what I want them doing because mm -hmm. you know as much as I may get on them and push them and rant and rave and scream and holler a senior saying something to you is going to mean more than the coach. The coach, you're going to automatically put it in that coaching right. box, and you're going to do it and respectfully and whatever. But your teammate says it to you, it goes in the coaching box. It goes in your care about your teammate. It goes in your respect. I mean, it just it's so much more when it comes from a teammate, and especially one that's got Jasmine and Megan and uh, Butler's credentials. When you were a player, uh, were you coaching on the floor also? At 21, 22 years Not old. Not like I should have. That's yeah. one of the things I wish. I wish. I had done a little differently. Uh, I was a little bit, you know, everybody's do your own thing, not do your own thing, but, you know, I'm not going to get on you because it's not my place. And uh, looking back, I wish I had done it differently. I wish, because if I'd have had the guts to say, Chris, you're not doing your job, right. it would have forced me to up my game and do my job. Because now I can't, I can't not do mine after I told you, you better do yours. Did you play with players that did that? I played with them. Uh, at Wake Forest, Muggsy Bogues did that. Muggsy? And, and Muggsy had a right to do it. You were slightly taller than he was. Slightly <laughs> taller than Muggsy. I could see Muggsy just. Muggsy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And let me, Muggsy talk to you? you yeah. Yes, sir. But Muggsy had to have that kind of determination and, and uh, I guess, uh, first per, or the, the type A personality, or he would have never made it where he made it. Well, he, yeah, I mean, you're, he's five foot three, right? And playing professional basketball for years, and played major college basketball, but he was just an unbelievable competitor. And I think that's what I'm seeing as I get older as a coach. That uh, I wish there was some kind of test for us to test and get competitors, mm -hmm. uh, because size, you know, athletic ability, age, nothing. If, if they can compete, if they want to compete, love to compete. Doesn't matter. Skill level doesn't matter. I mean, you have to be a certain level of all those things, but that that competitiveness is something that can just it can change everything. Did you ever see Muggsy dunk? No, no, no. Okay. he can't dunk. Okay. But Spud, Spud, Spud could good. dunk, but Muggsy couldn't dunk. Coach, this week you have two conference games coming up. Saturday you play at Moorhead, and then Monday Tennessee Tech comes to the Elam Center. Big two games. Uh, Friday and uh, have a Saturday afternoon game. It's flipped with the men. We play after the men, which. I I don't. Uh, but we'll play second on Saturday, and then we'll head back here for uh, a big game with Tennessee Tech uh, on Monday back at home. Kind of interesting that um, I'll ask you this final question: At Moorhead, without playing Eastern Kentucky, so it's not really a Death Valley trip because you don't play two teams. Uh, would you rather go ahead and play the two teams while you're up there? Yes. Okay. And that's the now we're going to ease into the little scheduling mm -hmm. world, which uh, if you look at our schedule, makes no sense why you wouldn't play those two games there. Uh, but somebody that knows a lot more than I do about scheduling scheduled it that way. And <laughs> I looked at our schedule next year, and we played two teams in the same week twice. Wow. Uh, so, really? Yeah, some, some, there's yeah. something about scheduling. I'm not real smart about scheduling. I, no. I wouldn't play two teams in the same week. No. So evidently there's some new way of scheduling that I'm not real – smart about that we're going towards and I don't know, you just play them as they come I guess. Okay, we'll leave it at that. Thank you coach. That's Coach Kevin McMillan and uh, you've been watching the Coach Kevin McMillan Show. Thanks for tuning in. The Coach Kevin McMillan Show is brought to you by BSN Sports. Thank you for your support of UT Martin Basketball.